That's live on custom live streaming service, streaming service. Right. It's just not actually running yet. So it's I enabled, see. but we don't have it okay. going. All right. So, yeah. You need to do a roll call before we start so the public knows we have a quorum or not. I don't think so. I mean, I think they can see more of us than we can see. Okay. I mean, upon some, the view that you're using. some I've been on, we had to do that. That's the only reason I asked. Uh -oh. Are we live, Crystal? That's Sorry, I was trying to get it. We are live now. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, then I will call the um, this meeting of the Joint Legislative Ethics Committee to order. Um, and I think all of you received the um, packet, including uh, most importantly, the, for our purposes at the moment, is the agenda. Um, and with the packet, there were a, a, quite a few um, disclosures and disclaimers. And I, if you've gone through them, I, does anybody have any questions or comments on the I have a, I have a question. Sure. Yes. Uh, just um, for a point of clarification from council, uh, when someone uh, files a um, recusal for either legislation or for some other state activity, um, you know, I noticed one of them uh, said that they live near, uh, you know, a uh, location, you know, a state road project. Um, when is someone able to recuse themselves and what, you know, what level of discretion do they have as it relates to any of those things? So the um, test for recusal is if there would be a direct and personal impact on you, your spouse, your dependent child, or your employer, and what the committee has determined to be a direct and personal conflict is a financial impact. Mm -hmm. I'm going to look at things like who is impacted. So is it, if it action would impact a large group equally and you are part of that group. It's impacting the entire industry. There's not something unique to you. Um, we've said that you need not recuse yourself. On the other hand, if it is just impacting you, you are the predominant player in the field, that's where you would need to recuse yourself. And if somebody is impacted similarly to others, but they feel that they're, um, they can't be unbiased, are they still allowed to recuse themselves? So um, what the, the law says is if you think you can't be impartial, you should recuse yourself. But if you think that you can put the public's interest ahead of your own, then we're going to do the analysis to see if that is a, um, an issue where you could waive the um, okay. That works, thank you. That mm -hmm. clears it up for me, thanks. Anybody have any other thoughts or questions or concerns about any of the disclosures and disclaimers? No? no? May I refer you to a couple? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I was gonna start, but it's probably oh, better sorry. that you it's all right. It's probably better you do it. So that's fine. So if you turn to page eight on, on your packet, um, this is a form D disclaimer of an apparent or presumed conflict of interest. And that is, sorry, I'm letting Senator Klausmeyer in. That's the form that you use to disclaim a conflict. There could be an appearance of a conflict with respect to X, but public, I'm putting your interests above my own. So on page eight, the Senator filed a disclaimer and simply wrote NA. So it, it's unclear what she's disclaiming. Um, if you turn to the next page, however, on page nine, you'll see that she's disclosed that she receives earned income from a consulting business. The committee has generally recommended that legislators file a disclaimer, a Form D, with respect to their profession. So for, for example, um, there could be an appearance of a conflict with respect to the legal profession because I'm a practicing attorney. 
for those members who are consultants, typically what they are disclaiming is a conflict with respect to the type of consulting that they do. So there could be an appearance of a conflict with respect to defense contracting, because I'm a defense contractor. There could be an appearance of a conflict of interest with respect to marketing, because I'm a marketing consultant. Um, it's basically just putting out to the public, hey, this is who I am. Um, so if there's legislation impacting that type of consulting, you've disclosed it. So hmm. should the Senator make that something more specific where she said not applicable? That would be my recommendation. Um, that's typically you know, when members call me and say that they are doing some sort of consulting or have any job. I tell them always file the D. Let's put the public on notice of what you're doing. Madam Chair, Madam Chair. Yes, of course, Senator Feldman. Just real quick, since you're referencing a senator and a she, are we still on YouTube? I just want to make sure that because, you know, we're in virtual world here. I don't want anybody them crossing line, throwing names out, um, you know, since you're using titles and genders and specifics. So we're still on YouTube. So nobody should be talking about any specific legislators. Uh, correct. I just want to make sure that we're. Well, and I'll let Dee answer, but these are yeah. public documents. No, no, no. I, 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 I got you. I just, yeah. you know, I could see somebody slipping up here in the group. So the statute does require that um, this discussion when we're discussing um, disclosures and disclaimers is, is public. Gotcha. Okay. Fair enough. I have a question, Madam Chairman. Certainly. Delegate Kip. Uh, is it also uh, um, important to list the sources of income as a consultant? I noticed some of the disclaimers listed the clients, or is it only uh, important to do that if uh, the consulting has anything to do with interested parties that come before or deal with or benefit or are impacted by the legislature? Yeah, yeah. If we um, look at what this, the statute says, this is something that you changed a few years ago. So the law typically doesn't require you to disclose all of your clients. Um, you would disclose a client if you are representing them before a state or local government entity, or if you are assisting them in seeking some sort of state or local contract competitive award, and you would financially benefit if they get that award. So you're doing the behind the scenes. You're putting together their application packet. You're not actually communicating with the government official, but you're putting together their packet, um, the law would require you to disclose that client. But the committee, the law doesn't require anyone to disclose all of their clients. I, I suspect that, especially the attorneys, probably the accountants um, in the yeah. General Assembly would have concerns with sharing that information. Yeah, I mean, I know I, for instance, certainly indicate that I practice family law, but right. I certainly don't list clients or whatever. So, right. you know, that my general practice is in family law. Does that answer your question, Delegate Kipke? Yeah, I just, if it's a consulting business, what would then prevent somebody from, you know, being a, you know, all of their consulting clients being interested parties in the legislative, legislative process? Is there anything in the in the code that would require disclosure of, you know, lobbyists or um, uh, any other entity that has, you know, a direct interest in legislative activity? So the committee has advised, and this is in, I believe, Ethics Opinion 3, where we talk about non-legislative interaction with lobbyists. The committee has advised that a member who has some sort of outside relationship with a lobbyist must disclaim a conflict with respect to that lobbyist. And there could be a situation where, because of that relationship, you need to recuse yourself. Um, you'll see, if you turn to, oh, page 17, um, there's a senator who 
in his business, he has clients who have um, interests before the General Assembly, and he discloses that and he disclaims that conflict. Um, and I always advise members who have clients who have interests before the General Assembly, you know, we're in regular communication about when that relationship may require them to recuse themselves. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Dia, you said that you had a couple that you would, or I guess before we move on, what's the process um, if we think there should be more information on the Senator's um, disclaimer? Do you simply contact her? I'll just reach out to her and okay. let her know yeah. that. It doesn't really require committee action or whatever. Correct, okay. correct. I'll simply tell her the committee asked for additional information. Okay, Delegate Rosenberg. Yeah, related to that, I found several of these forms barely intelligible mm -hmm. as to, because they were revising a previous form. Right. Are you, is it appropriate for you, Dia, to tell you people, please put this in writing as opposed to scribbles? Certainly. I can I can certainly do that. Um, you know, if there is ever one that, you know, you can't read. There was one that was pretty well crossed out and revised and crossed out and yeah. If you just let me know um, any that you have concerns with, I'll let the member know. Yeah, and just to follow up on that, uh, Delegate Rosenberg, I thought one the one that we just talked about that required additional information, I thought the only reason I didn't have, I thought it was revising a previous form that I just didn't see. So I just assumed that the information I was looking for was on the other form. So. Okay, well, but maybe the next time we have to communicate with everybody, I don't think it requires a special letter. Good. Um, Good. You know, we sort of indicate, mm -hmm. you know, A, by the way, when you're doing these forms, it would certainly be helpful if it's more clear, you know, and that you don't just cross something out, that maybe you just complete an amended form or. Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe they just need to know that we do look at them. Well, there's that. <laughs> right. So, okay. uh, yes, thank Delegate you. Ellison. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I assume, but want to confirm that electronic signatures on these disclosure forms are okay, so that we can actually fill it out online and then um, just elect do an electronic signature. Is that sufficient? I think so, yeah. Correct. In fact, if you, um, in addition to just typing on the form, um, you can go through the floor system and electronically complete the form, you click a button, it immediately goes to me. I encourage people to use that. Um, then we don't have to worry about the handwriting issue. We don't have to worry, about, you know, we can run spell check. <laughs> <laughs> Great, thank you. Other questions? Dee, I think you said there were a couple you wanted to point out. So I also direct you to page 59. Um, this is a statement of recusal, the member, he disclosed that he was recusing himself from HB4 because he believed he could stand to personally benefit from this bill. My question to you is to ensure that the public has sufficient information, do we need to get some additional details? There's an HB4 every year, perhaps we right. should the name <laughs> of the bill. Right. Uh, the statute does require that a member who is recusing themselves describe the circumstances of the conflict. Um, this is a question for you. Is a statement, I believe I could personally benefit, is that a sufficient description of the circumstances of the conflict? Or do we want to know, you know, I own XYZ business, this bill would only impact me. I think we do need that additional information. Um, HB4 could, whatever it is, could impact all of us personally. So I think, you know, we need to understand can I, that. Can I, Madam Chair, can I just? Absolutely. So are we more concerned with people actually voting with respect on a matter that they have a conflict as opposed to deciding not to weigh in? In other words, I mean, I like if somebody says they're not weighing in, um, you know, yes, I, I, you know, I agree. You want 
information as to why they're not weighing in. On the other hand, like where's the public, I mean, we're, from the interest of public interest, it's the concern is more the other way, right? I mean, um, if somebody makes a decision for whatever reason, they're not weighing in. I mean, we have people that sit at the, in, the, in the chamber and don't vote. Like I know we have house rules that say if you're sitting at your chair, you don't vote. Um, but what's the public uh, sort of interest in getting like a lot of detail about why somebody decides they don't want to participate. I just put that out there. I mean, I, I don't disagree with, we want information as to why they came to that conclusion, but just um, in terms of um, from a policy, you know, that seems less of a concern to me than actually voting on a bill. Yeah. Right, put it out there. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, Dia, if you had a comment on that or. So I, I believe because there, I say let's say you put that out there, you have more information. I mean, is that something that's subject to review that your rationale for not participating was really inadequate? Like it really wasn't a conflict. And you just I mean, like, what exactly do you do with that more detailed information? You, you disagree or agree with the conclusion the member made? Do you then go back and say, you know what, you've given us information? We don't really think that's a grounds for recusal and you must vote. I mean, just taking it to the next step, you know, mm -hmm. with that extra information. I, I believe yeah. the intent of the, the legislature adding that language to require you to describe the circumstances of the conflict is so that the public is aware, I have XYZ conflict for this bill, here's the okay. conflict. We can judge, am I being consistent and okay, okay. the same issue comes up? Am okay, I that, that, makes that, makes that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. Uh, Dia, were there others that you wanted to point out or did that answer or address all of the questions? Okay. Those are the only ones I wanted to highlight. Okay. And does anybody else have any other comments, questions, concerns with any of the other disclosure and disclaimers? No. Okay. And with that, actually, um, Senator Edwards, would you make our motion? Uh, I certainly will. I move to close this meeting to comply with subsection 5-517 of the general provisions article, which requires that any member before the ethics committee, including information related to any complaint, proceeding or record of committee shall remain confidential. During the closed session, the committee will not discuss any matter that falls within any exception to the confidentiality requirement of subsection 5-517 of the general provisions. And is so there a second? Second. All those in favor, I guess wave. Aye. Aye. Our little voting thing up, all right. Um, so the motion carries and with that, we will go into executive session. We just need to wait a second to allow um, DLS to get us off the live stream. So yep. someone will. Crystal, I guess we'll let us know when we're not live streaming. Yes, I just just message so it'll be 1.15.